Today's layoff news is from PwC, Price Waterhouse Coopers. I don't really have much of an intro for you, so let's just dive into what's going on. The first article today is from payments.com, and the headline is PwC plans to cut 1,800 jobs, citing changing market demands. And as always, the articles I reference are listed down in the description below, so you can read the whole thing for yourself. I'm just going to go over the highlights and how it pertains to what we're talking about today. The article goes on to say, accounting giant Price Waterhouse Coopers, PwC, is reportedly cutting around 1,800 jobs. The layoffs, its first in 15 years, will be accompanied by a restructuring of PwC's technology group amid slowing demand for its advisory services, the Wall Street Journal reported Wednesday, September 11th, citing sources familiar with the matter. So this is a little bit different than what we talk about usually, because usually we talk about how there's writing on the wall and there's been little layoffs, right? A office closing here or there, a group getting let go of here and there. But this article is saying that this is PwC's first layoff in 15 years. So if you were to feel more safe, more comfortable at an organization, it would seem like PwC would be one of them. But even they are now falling victim to layoffs. The article goes on to say, those sources say PwC, one of the big four accounting operations, is in the process of cutting staff in the U.S. and elsewhere, chiefly in its U.S. advisory and products and technology operations. The cuts, about half of which are offshore, include associates as well as managing directors. It also includes business services, audit and tax divisions, the sources said. Also, it's another example of people more at a managerial level being laid off as well. I mean, we saw this with HSBC getting rid of their middle managers. We read about this with Verizon, even though someone said all the non, someone said in the comments, all the non-union people are just classified as managers. I don't know if that's true. I didn't really fact check that. But here we also see not just regular employees, but managing directors as well. So we know things are getting bad in the economy when not just salespeople or customer service representatives are being laid off, but people at a managerial level are being laid off as well. PwC intends to notify those affected roughly 2.5% of the workforce at the U.S. unit. In October, the sources added, a staff memo obtained by the Wall Street Journal outlined the layoff and restructuring plans. So this is not as big of a percentage as we've heard about before, because we've heard about even up to 20% layoff at Shell, and then I think 15% at Eventbrite, I think 12 or 14% at Ultimate Kronos Group. So we've heard some big percentage-wise layoffs. So this is smaller, but still. But even just one person getting laid off or fired from out of the blue is one too many people. And this layoff is not something that's right away. They are going to let those people know in October if they're part of the layoffs. And can you just imagine this? Like, imagine this with me for a second. Like, you know your company is doing layoffs, but you don't know if it's your department. You don't know if it's going to be you. And it's, what, September? And you have to just sit around and work and worry for at least another month to find out if you're one of the ones who's going to get laid off. I mean, all these layoff situations are quite miserable and quite unpleasant, obviously, when you're going to lose your livelihood and you're losing your livelihood into an economy and a job market that's this bad. But wow, I couldn't imagine just having to be worried and anxious for a whole month about the future of my job. And I, so I don't know what's better. Is it better to just get laid off out of the blue? Is it better to know a month ahead of time that it might be time to start looking? I don't know, all of these seem pretty bad to me. The article goes on to say that there will be an element of resource action that will impact a relatively small portion of our people, something that is never easy, Paul Griggs, PwC's US leader said in a memo, adding that the company hopes to restructure its products and technology teams to embed them in individual business lines and streamline processes in the business services. When reaching for comment by payments, PwC U.S. Chief Operating Officer Tim Grady said the move was necessary. He goes on to say, 
To remain competitive and position our business for the future, we are continuing to transform areas of our firm and are aligning our workforce to better support our strategy, including attracting and moving the right talent and skill sets to the areas where we need them most. Right now, we are focused on running our business well and adapting to meet the needs of our clients and the rapidly changing market. The Wall Street Journal noted that PwC has positioned itself as an outlier among the big four over the past two years by not cutting its U.S. workforce. The other three firms, EY, KPMG, and Deloitte, let go of thousands of U.S. workers during that period. So I don't know how anybody is going around and saying that the U.S. economy is doing great. <laughs> Hopefully no one's saying it's doing better than ever. I mean, we see this here with PricewaterhouseCoopers. I mean, this is a great example. Other, the three other big four accounting firms were laying people off. And then maybe you could say, well, PwC never had to lay off anybody. Things must be getting better because at least PwC doesn't have a layoff. Well, here you go they're going to lay off 1,800 people. And if things were going in the right direction, if things were turning around, if the economy was on the upswing, then this wouldn't be happening, right? I mean, you know, we see, I mean, every day this week, I'm able to find a new big time organization, not just a small mom and pop organization, but big organizations that are laying off people. So how could the economy be good if thousands of people each day are learning that their job is going to be eliminated. The article goes on to say that the layoffs come as PwC is facing other pressures. For example, the US Public Company Accounting Oversight Board earlier this week issued new quality control standards for the accounting firm. Those standards were approved by the US Securities and Exchange Commission in a three to two vote in the face of objections from the likes of the US Chamber of Commerce and firms including EY and PwC. The standards require accounting firms that audit more than 100 public companies to set up an oversight board that includes at least one independent outsider to help oversee audit quality. An auditing firm is ultimately a professional services firm and it needs to ensure the quality of the services it provides, said SEC Chair Gary Gensler. I am pleased to approve this standard because I will improve the quality control systems of auditors and thus better protect investors. Our second article of the day has a similar headline, but let's just read what's different in this article from our previous article. It is from thefinancestory.com, and the headline is, PwC fires 1,800 employees. What's driving Big Four's major U.S. layoffs? And then there's some key takeaways and also a chart here. So the key takeaways say that for the first time since 2009, PwC has announced a significant reduction in its U.S. workforce. About 1,800 workers, roughly 2.5% of the U.S. workforce, will be affected as PwC adjusts to changing market demands. So what's driving PwC's first major U.S. layoffs in over a decade? So then they have like aspects and details chart. So the aspects are layoffs. We're going to lay off. They're going to lay off 1,800 people. Service lines impacted. Advisory products and technology. Half offshore roles. Roles affected from associates to managing directors. The restructuring is led by U.S. leader Paul Griggs. AI investments. $1.8 billion in generative AI. 100,000 employees, 75,000 in the U.S., to get chat GPT enterprise access. Global expansion to India, PwC India to create 30,000 jobs, reaching 80,000 employees by 2028. Other big four layoffs, KPMG also cutting 200 UK jobs amid weaker demands. So once we go more into the details here, we are able to see that it's not so much that they're just completely getting rid of all of their employees. They're essentially offshoring to India, right? Because if they're looking to create 30,000 jobs, well, you just got rid of 1,800 to replace them with 30,000 people. And they're looking to grow to 80,000 employees by 2028. But they're seeing, just like almost every other company, that you don't need to have American workers, apparently, when you could just ship most of these jobs off to India. So more to the AI component. Doubling down on AI. While PwC is cutting jobs, it also is doubling down on AI in a big way. The firm has committed $1 billion to invest in generative AI for its U.S. operations over the next three years. The bold move includes integrating OpenAI's ChatGPT enterprise across the firm, 
with a rollout to 100,000 employees planned, 75 of those in the U.S. alone. PwC's China crisis. The real trouble lies in the fallout from the Evergrande scandal. PwC is under scrutiny after China's securities regulator accused Evergrande of inflating its revenues by nearly $80 billion, even as PwC China's unit signed off on its accounts. This has led to talk of a six-month suspension, the LLP that is PwC's auditing arm in mainland China. The firm recently lost a major client when Country Garden Holdings dropped PwC as its auditor, a major blow to its business in the region. And that's not all. PwC has been dropped by major Chinese companies, including Bank of China, China Life Insurance, PICC, China Taiping Insurance, and China Cinda Asset Management. These exits follow government guidance and signal of the firm's increasingly precarious position in China. PwC's decision to axe jobs in the U.S. mirrors broader challenges faced by the big four accounting firms. KPMG, EY, and Deloitte have also been grappling with economic pressures and higher interest rates, resulting in significant layoffs across the industry. In June 2024, KPMG cut 200 jobs in the UK as part of its own cost-cutting measures, highlighting the difficult choices firms must make to stay afloat in these uncertain times. In July through August 2024, one particular Big Four service, Delivery Center, in India caught everyone's attention. Approximately 250 people were forced to resign or faced with stalled promotions, leading them to resign voluntarily. On the contrary, in 2023, PwC India unveiled plans to create 30,000 new jobs over the next five years, strengthening its presence in the country. The expansion could bring the firm's total employee count in India to over 80,000 by 2028. And not all of you guys are into remote work like I'm into it, but while we're on the topic of PwC, I want to quickly talk about their remote work policy. So this article is from ctvnews.ca, and, PW, and the headline is PwC tells employees it will use location data to police back-to-office rule. PwC will start tracking where its employees in the United Kingdom work in a bid to dial back its current work-from-home culture. Staff at the UK arm of PwC, one of the world's big four accounting firms, were this week informed by management that the new policy would take effect on January 1st. A memo sent to the company's 26,000 UK employees on Thursday and shared with CNN said the measure was taken to formalize the company's approach to working together in person. Employees were told they must spend at least three days a week or 60% of the time in the office or with clients. Previous guidelines required them to be in for between two to three days each week, but the memo suggests this was not universally adhered to. It said, our business thrives on strong relationships, and those are almost always more easily built and sustained face-to-face. -face. By being physically together, we can offer our clients a differentiated experience and create the positive learning and coaching environment that is key to our success. According to PwC, the move is intended to adjust the firm's hybrid working approach and put more emphasis on in-person working. We all benefit from the positive impact of a hybrid approach, but the previous guidance of at least two to three days a week was open to interpretation. This update aims to provide clarity around where and how we expect everyone to work, the memo said. While many staff are already spending more time in person with their clients and teams for others, the time may be needed to settle into new working patterns, the company told employees. With that in mind, we will start sharing your individual working location data with you on a monthly basis from January, as we do with other data such as, cha as chargeable hours. This will help to ensure that the new policy is being fairly and consistently applied across our business. In a press release published online, the man a managing partner at PwC UK said, face-to-face -face working is hugely important to a people business like ours, and the new policy tips the balance of our working week into being located alongside clients and colleagues. This feels right for our business and right for our people, given our focus on client service, coaching, and learning and development. At the same time, we continue to offer flexibility through hybrid working. When asked by CNN what would happen if someone did not fully comply, a spokeswoman for PwC said, if the monthly data shows someone is consistently breaching the policy, We'd, want, we'd first want to understand the reasons why. So a lot of news out of PricewaterhouseCoopers here today, and I'd love to hear your thoughts down in the comments below. I mean, we've covered everything from 1,800 people being let go, and really none of them know they're gonna be let go, but they're gonna be, that's gonna be announced sometime in October. We talked about the fact that they're growing in India, 
and trying to get to 80,000 employees in India, which we know is going to be a much lower cost to the company than American-based or even UK-based employees. And speaking to the UK, now we know that they're putting monitoring software and they're going to be tracking your every move of your laptop. And their goal is to get you to basically just come back into the office if you don't want to be hunted like a dog. So let me know what you think because there's a lot of things going on with PwC. Talk to you later.